I would like to ask uh, Andres Plamin from uh, Next Level to start his presentation on Art of Thinking Small. So give a round of applause. And if you didn't get your beer coupon, also go there, get your beer coupons, and then go there, get your beer. Okay. So, all good? Uh, yes, something seems to be cut off, but okay, well, okay. I'll just probably be good. Uh, okay, so good evening, everyone. I'm Andres from Game Development Studio Next Level. Uh, I'm co owner of it, but also game designer there. I've written some academic papers uh, concerning games and then uh, spent uh, 10 or so years uh, reviewing games. And uh, I'd like to talk uh, about a problem uh, uh, that I've, I've uh, observed in Latvian game community. Maybe it's not that topical nowadays, but uh, in recent years it was very strong. And uh, uh, I believe the problem is uh, our inability uh, sometimes to think small. Uh, let me illustrate uh, the problem. So, so I, I believe that some of you have experienced the situation. Uh, you're a young aspiring game developer. You've decided, uh, okay, I play games. Games are great. Uh, let's make my first game. You, you're very certain. You know what you want to make. You have a clear vision. It's something like that. Uh, everything is clear. And you start working, you work hard, you spend hundreds of hours uh, developing this game and then at some point uh, some kind of a competition deadline comes and, and, and you see, okay, yes, so it's almost done and then you check and you have something along the lines of this. <laughs> and, uh, and how did that happen? Well, what, what the, well, why did uh, instead of this you got this? Uh, of course, the obvious answer is that uh, Making a huge project uh, costs lots of money, always needs more time and uh, more people, etc., 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 and we never are able to estimate uh, the size of the project uh, because we suck at it. Uh, everything we do always will be more life draining, uh, more complex, and so on than we thought. But uh, I would like to talk about another problem. Why, in the first place, uh, uh, I tried to make something like that. And I think that's a problem of mindset. Uh, uh, this is some certain mindset, uh, this mindset of a hardcore game. Uh, I, I, I believe that most of us who are gamers here have grown up playing uh, not lots of hardcore PC games, uh, like I know Grand Theft Auto or, 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 or Elder Scrolls. Civilization, etc., and uh, and kind of we have created this this idea that, that this is a real game, this is the real thing. Like these are the games, and then there's other shit like like flash games, which are played by children or watch your parents, and and, uh, and these got played like, with uh, social network games or mobile games. Uh, well, this is trash. This is a real deal. So if you want to be a game developer, you should try to make this. Uh, we have this mindset, and, uh, and it's a horrible mindset because uh, you kind of can't make this unless you have a team or lots of experience or you have the right situation where you can do it, but it shouldn't, something like that shouldn't be your first project uh, uh, because most likely it will always be a failure. So, well, to tell the story, what changed uh, my mindset? Uh, why? All games are games, not necessarily hardcore games. Uh, 
Um, oh yeah, this slide illustrated this idea. Yeah, this is always better than this. Um, so, how to change your mindset. Um, some time ago, I also believed that hardcore games is a real thing, uh, the rest is crap. But uh, at some point uh, in my current occupation, uh, I worked at uh, NetGames uh, news portal and uh, suddenly one of my colleagues was laid off and I had to put uh, Flash games also on the portal. Flash games were very popular, it was cheap traffic, uh, everyone uh, wanted Flash games, so in addition to writing game reviews, I had to search for Flash games and put them and uh, maybe play them to see if, if they were okay. I, I wasn't very happy about it, but decided, okay, well, what the hell, let's just deal with this. And uh, soon I found out yes, uh, that after getting to know lots and lots of these games, they are uh, not that bad. Actually, there are lots of interesting, original, and ingenious ideas, uh, and quite often more than in these hardcore AA budget games. And, uh, and this kind of started to change my, my mindset about uh, small games. Additionally, I started getting excited about board games, which is kind of completely something completely different, but in a way it is also like smaller budget games, not di digital, but uh, they can be played and they use completely different mechanics and they kind of give insight into game world uh, which uses different rules and uh, some kind of completely different approach than our common known genres. Uh, you can't have an FPS uh, on board, you can have many very interesting strategy variations. So, yeah, new experience with lots of flash games and board games. And, well, there are some kind of obvious things that I saw which were better in these small games. Uh, but this is not, not the main thing. These are go good things, but uh, this is not the main thing. Like, uh, they have to grab attention quickly. Uh, in case of flash games, they are free. So, you have to be more awesome than the million other free games. Uh, you have to offer playing those immediately. People have come to play the game and, uh, and they want to play They don't want to watch uh, three or five or ten minutes long cutscene and then read uh, some kind of prehistory and uh, things like that. Uh, the game should engage you with the gaming process uh, at once. Uh, they always should be easy to learn because uh, every idiot can go on the internet and play flash games. Right? Uh, it doesn't mean they have to be simple. But the learning curve has to be easy, and, 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 and everyone should be able to grasp the game. And uh, the playability, the games are small usually, so you have to think uh, how to make them longer, how to increase their longevity, so they are not just five minute uh, time spent and that's all. And finally, uh, oh, yeah, it, it's, it's cut off. Okay, yeah, there's, even, uh, there's a quick feedback. Games are easier to make, they are smaller, so you faster you can learn that your game sucks and make the next one, which uh, probably sucks less. Um, and these are all great things. And, and I believe they, they could help uh, hardcore games uh, greatly, but, uh, but this is not the main stuff. This is just additional bonuses. Uh, there is a, a different thing which I think uh, matters more. Uh, the question is, what is a game? I think this is a problem that uh, often in our useful maximalism we, we forget what a game is. We have this idea that a, a normal game is, for instance, something with shaders and, and, and with uh, levels, with vast uh, 3D worlds, and etc. And if we take a look at this, let's say we use this game. Yeah, its story sucks, I can tell you. Uh, it's, it's pretty weak, yeah. Uh, exploring is non-existent. Uh, everything can be seen. It's not cool. Cinematics, none. Uh, yeah, graphics are outdated. And, uh, well, it, it's clear. It's, it's poor. Yeah. From this kind of viewpoint, chess uh, sucks. Uh, but, but we know that chess is an excellent game, it's time-tested, it's, it's, uh, it's very good. So, we kind of, I think, 
being too abstract ourselves and think that uh, game isn't necessarily about story. Story is great and it can be implemented in the game and sometimes it can be inseparable, but uh, often you can live without story. Uh, you don't necessarily need vast 3D world. Uh, two examples, uh, there was a gothic RPG game and then there is the Elder Scrolls Arena. Uh, one was huge arena and then gothic was pretty small, but uh, the gothic was much better because uh, uh, the things that were, were there, they were meaningful. You don't need vast world if it's if it doesn't serve your purposes, um, it, it's not that fun to wander around uh, in huge uh, everythingness. And, uh, well, graphics, uh, visuals are really important, but still they are not the most important thing. So, if we kind of think that the game is, uh, yeah, it, it, it's gone all wrong, okay. Is, uh, yeah, it's sad, that doesn't make even sense. <laughs> That's very sad, but, uh, okay. Anyways, uh, if we think about game as interesting cho choices in a dynamically developing environment, uh, then, uh, then chess is fantastic, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my nice. you. Yeah, then, then it's great. Uh, so, if we abstract ourselves that the game doesn't necessarily need to be huge or, or, or big or whatever, but it has to offer you these interesting choices uh, and possibility to see patterns, to learn new things. There's this nice saying that the game is interesting as long as you're learning new things uh, within it. Uh, then, uh, then many, these small games, flat games, mobile games, uh, sometimes even social network games, uh, they do this better than hardcore games. And there are two reasons, and these are the reasons why I suggest that new aspiring game developers uh, shouldn't try to make crisis, but should try to make something small. Uh, because, firstly, if you're making something small, it's easier to focus and experiment with game mechanics. He has this idea that game mechanics is a central thing of the game, then it's easier to change it around, try something else, to iterate many times till it's, till it's fun. If you're making a huge 3D world, then you're kind of slave of it. You can't mix that many things up, or you have to make uh, another game already next year or so. If it's small, you're, you're kind of agile, you, you can do stuff. And uh, secondly, uh, yeah, small games are kind of format limiting, you, you, you can't make so many things with it, but uh, limitations is a great thing for creativity. Because when you, you have like everything, you can do anything, uh, you, it's kind of difficult to think about it, but once you're given some kind of uh, problems, then you can think around it and like, find solutions. So, limitations are good for creativity. Um, yeah. Uh, just in case you wonder, uh, this game is flash game in spectator two or something like that. Just simple game where you just click on the screen and then you infect some people on the screen and they turn into zombies and they kill other people and then you try to take over the world. It's immensely fun. And uh, Binding of Isaac is kind of a larger game, but it's still made in flash uh, the world and then uh, and it's. Uh, a uh, custom random generated dungeon exploring with uh, numerous uh, upgrades and it's also tremendous fun though, it's very simple. Um, so yeah, uh, at, at the end, I hope I have still, still some time, a small example of a small game that I made following these ideas. Uh, yeah, the case study, gentlemen with gargoyles. Uh, I'm not a programmer, but I wanted to make a game, a uh, flash game. And, uh, I had this problem, I did not have any programming skills, but I wanted to do it myself. So I knew that I had to make something very simple. So even someone so useless as I could program it. Uh, so the game was kind of primitive. We have this gentleman, this youth, who, who, who walks uh, vertically along with his balcony and shoots uh, at gargoyles who are coming to his balcony and try to wake up his stone gargoyles, gargoyles and lure them away. 
that you just move with mouse and click and shoot in straight lines. Kind of very simple primitive. Uh, would be boring, but once you have this uh, kind of simple preset, you start thinking around, well, what could I do to make this uh, actually fun? So, making this, I added some, to my mind, pretty fun RPG mechanics where you uh, experience, you unlock weapons, you can upgrade them, uh, uh, you get some skills, uh, and uh, once I had made the system, I didn't try to improve the game or, or, or find all the memory leaks or do stuff like that. I just uh, balanced and uh, balanced these weapons and enemies so that it would be fun to try various various builds and the game would be replayable. And uh, yeah, you know, I didn't have a screen with one weapon, but there's a boss so later, and, and, and Tesla coils and so on. And uh, so I spent three months developing it. It was, I think, three years ago. Uh, also learning to code in the process. Uh, I sold it successfully at Platinum License Company for $1,400. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty sum of money for three months worth of work, but uh, it was a hobby work and I was surprised that I could even sell it for such a sum of money. Um, I played it some weeks ago and, and I loved it. I, I, I had fun playing it. So this is kind of an example of uh, how to make something small and fun by focusing on, on the game mechanics instead of uh, some kind of this huge uh, aspiration to make uh, a thing. So in conclusion, yeah, creating some games not necessarily defined by size. And my advice would be for, for first time game developers or so focus on the center of things that you know that you need for this to work to be fun and cut the rest. If you don't need that uh, 3D city, maybe you can do it without. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your attention. Yay! Okay, cool. This is our first speaker. Uh, uh, on the side note, like, uh, if you want internet and don't know the password, you can look at that wall or this hole or something and there is a username and password, so check it out so you can use it. Um,